If you're sitting too close to your bass drum or too low, you're likely inhibiting your right foot's ability to play faster with less effort. I'll show you why this is as we fix this together. You can do this. Hey, welcome to the Non-Glamorous Drummer. I'm so glad you're hanging out with me today. I help beginner and intermediate drummers become the musicians who other people want to play with and have in their bands and who nail songs and sound awesome. And we do this by teaching you the core drumming skills, the non-glamorous skills that get you faster results in the practice room. And hey, as we get rolling today, I've got to ask you a question. How would you like to be able to play the ideas you hear in your head on the drums? How would you like to be able to just sit down and feel at home at your kit and just execute the ideas you've got in your head on the fly? Well, in order to do this, you have to have coordination. With four-way coordination, everything you play on the drums is easy, pretty much. Without four-way coordination, everything is tedious and difficult and requires more CPU than you feel like you have. I totally understand, I totally relate, I've been there. I've got a free guide for you though that's gonna help you out a bunch. This is my 30 days to four-way rock coordination for the beginner drummer guide. And it's 30 days worth of lessons, a lesson each day. It's okay if it takes you longer than 30 days, by the way. This guide is really cool. It's been so helpful to so many drummers, helping you just build coordination one step at a time through fun musical grooves you actually use in songs. And just a tip, a lot of something I've heard from a lot of students, once you get to days 10, 11, 12, up to day 15, that's where you start to see a lot of progress, a lot of results. So you've got to stick with it, get through that sophomore slump, and then you'll get tremendous game-changing coordination results from this guide. So go grab it, it's totally free. Link is in the description below. It's gonna help you be able to play what you hear in your head and increase your brain's bandwidth so that you can just have fun on the drums again. All right, on with today's lesson. I'll say again what I said back at the top of the video. If you are sitting too close to your kick drum or you're sitting too low, you are likely inhibiting your right foot's ability to play as freely and as relaxed and therefore as loudly and as quickly as it might actually be able to. And I'm preaching to myself here too, as we get into this, this was something that I was so guilty of and I had to work through on my own for a long time. So I'm tall, I'm six, three and a half. And for a long time, when I started playing the drums, I was sitting too low because most stools I would sit on were adjusted too low for me. And so I had to eventually learn to start setting stuff higher. But in sitting too low, I was putting more strain on my back because if you're sitting like this and your knees are up higher, you're having to bend over more when you think about it. It's harder to sit up straight. And so even as a high schooler getting into college, I was putting unnecessary strain on my back and not making things any easier for myself. And then for years after that, I was still sitting too close and what was happening, so not only did I have the back strain going on from sitting too low, but I had knee pain going on from sitting too close because I was playing into the drum and it's almost like my foot was running into the kick drum, not literally, but I was running into the chain at the end of the pedal. And so all of that was putting this force and this pressure and tension on my ankle and leg and knee that should not have been there. And so long story short, in fixing all of that, I eliminated all that pain. That might be you today. Maybe you've got the lower back pain. Maybe you feel like you're not balanced at the kit. Maybe you just don't feel comfortable. You don't feel like you can relax at all. And maybe you've got some knee pain going on and probably the reason why you're here is because you're not able to play what you wanna play on the kick drum. It's either not loud enough, it's not fast enough, it's just not working. So you're in the right place today. Know that I understand, I understand the problem. I have been there and I've had to work through this myself and I wanna help you do the same today. So what you've gotta ultimately do here is be open to experimenting with throne height and placement and try airing on the side of too high and or too far back. I know it might feel out of your comfort zone at first. It did for me. I felt like I had more control over my right foot when I was sitting closer. It's that whole flawed mindset of, well, if I'm closer to it, I have more control over it and therefore more speed. But nothing could be further from the truth. If you are too close to your kick drum, you're cramping things up and you are hindering your ability. So even if it feels weird at first to sit further back, give it a try. Even if it feels weird at first to sit higher, give it a try. And what I wanna do is just give you some guidelines because ultimately you have to figure out your sweet spot. I can't tell you, all right, set your throne to 26 inches high and you know 38 inches from your head. I can't tell you the specific measurements because odds are they will not work for you. But I can give you some guidelines and these guidelines will help you get started and at least know you're in the ballpark. And so then if you take these guidelines and again, you err on the side of maybe a little higher than you're comfortable with, maybe a little further back, be open-minded about this and just 
sit and test it out and ask yourself, how does this feel? Does it feel better than it did before? If that's your mindset and you follow these guidelines, you are going to be in a way better place than you were before today. And that's what we want because this is the first in a series of three lessons all about playing louder and faster on the bass drum and being able to play whatever you wanna play on the kick drum. And this is that key first step. And so you've gotta get this squared away first because seriously, your throne, where you've got your throne set might be slowing your kick foot. And so we wanna eliminate this as a variable right off the bat so that then in the next lesson, we can talk about technique and talk about how can we get more fluidity out of our right foot? And then in that final lesson, how can we tie it in with everything else we're doing and build speed? All right, so three specific actions for you as we dive in here to the meat of this, all with the intention of giving yourself more space, especially more distance from the kick if you are heel down and especially more height if you're heel up. We'll talk about that a little more in a moment. But action step number one, place your throne based on the two to one rule. The two to one rule is take your height, we're gonna say six feet, just for easy math here. I know many of you are shorter than that. Some of you are taller than that like I am, I'm six, three and a half. Let's say six feet, take your height, and just divide it in half. That is the distance that we want from the hoop of the bass drum to the center of our drum throne. So three feet. If you are six feet tall, that means we wanna measure three feet from the hoop, not the head, but the hoop, to the center of the stool. Not the edge, but the center. Now remember, this is just a guideline. So it's not necessarily crucial that we're talking about hoop versus head. But for myself, this did work out pretty exact, where if I measured from the hoop, the center of my stool, it was just over three feet, which is half of my height being a little over six feet. And that is a great starting place, especially if you're heeled down because you need to have a lot of distance here if you're playing heel down. Otherwise, you end up losing, you end up having less than a right angle between your upper leg and lower leg. Remember, that's the key guideline that we want here. In case I didn't already say that, in case you haven't already heard that, that is the, the big thing we want here with our leg. If we have less than a 90 degree angle like this, this would be crazy. Or if we sit too low, we end up with less than a 90 degree angle. But as we sit further back, that angle opens up. And the less sharp of angles we have here between our, our leg and our ankle, the more able our foot is to play freely. It's like magic the way this works. Because you'll notice that if you're playing heel down, imagine you're sitting on a sofa and you set your, your, your heel on the floor and you're trying to tap your foot right here in this leg position, that's really hard. But as you extend out to here, well, suddenly it gets easier. That's the way your joints were designed. That's the way they work. So you've got to give your leg space here and make sure you have greater than a 90 degree angle right here. So in theory, you can get by with sitting kind of low if you're playing heel down as long as you've got a lot of distance. But the height does help with the back strain. We'll talk about that more in a moment. So use this as your guiding point, that two to one rule. So if you're about six feet tall, adjust center of your throne three feet back from the hoop of your bass drum. That's gonna give you a great starting point. And from there, you can make slight adjustments and deviate from that and find what's comfortable for you. Step two, the height of your stool. Let's adjust your height according to the three to one rule. So now we're gonna take our height and divide it by three. So if we're six feet tall divided by three, that's two feet. So adjust your throne to be two feet high. Now, this gets a little messy because every throne has, different, has a different amount of cush to it. And if you've got one of those super squishy thrones, then you might actually wanna go higher than that because when you sit on it, you sink down into it. If you have a firmer throne, this is a DW9000 airlift throne. It's actually fairly firm, so I don't sink too much into it. I'm also not super heavy, so take that for what it's worth. Adjust your throne based on how far you're gonna be sitting into it. So go a little higher if it's super cushy, but roughly, roughly that one third of your height, throne height is where you wanna go with this. This is gonna help you with better posture. It's gonna help you reduce back strain because you might notice if you're sitting, you know, if you're sitting on a bar stool and you're making sure that you sit up straight on that bar stool, you can sit there for a while without back strain. But if you're sitting on a tiny little, you know, eight inch high stool on the floor and your knees are sitting up in the air and your back's kind of bent over and you don't have anything to lean against, your back is gonna hurt fairly quickly. Even if you're, you're pretty young, <laughs> your back's gonna start hurting. And so it's just the way our bodies are built. The higher you can sit and the more you have a downward slope here from your upper leg, from your thigh, the more relaxed your lower back can be, the less strain there's gonna be there, and the more balanced you're going to feel, especially if you're playing heel up. So the other point we've gotta make here, I've gotta remind you that these guidelines are starting points, and if you're playing heel up, let's, let's keep this simple, let's think about this logically. If you're playing heel up, that means that your heel, I'm gonna take my shoe off for a second, is gonna live a few inches above the floor, right? Or above the foot plate. So if I'm playing heel down, my heel is gonna live right here on 
the, the heel plate of the pedal. Not quite down here on the floor, but not up here either, about right here. So if we're gonna play heel up, well that means, okay, my heel's probably gonna live three or four inches, let's say four inches above that heel plate. So if a third of our height is the optimum thrown height for playing heel down, at least for me, and it might be for you too, but you're gonna play heel up, then we just need to add four inches to that, right? If we just add four more inches to our thrown height, then we're gonna feel pretty good about that heel up position because now we're able to compensate for that because what we don't want is to lift our heel up and now suddenly our knee is higher than our hip. That's not good. We don't even want this to be level. We want our, our thigh to be sloping down even while playing heel up. So in order to maintain that downward slope and that greater than 90 degree angle right here, we've got to then sit higher. And so odds are, what I've noticed just in my experience with myself and observing other students, most drummers who are playing heel down are not sitting far enough back. Most drummers who are playing heel up are not sitting high enough. So if you're playing heel up, try sitting even higher and see how it feels. That does mean adjusting other things on your kit higher. That's fine, there's no rules that say you can't do that. And most hardware will adjust plenty high. It's ridiculous how high these hi-hats will go. See how high this rod is? It's like the height of my chest. So I could, I could go heel up and sit crazy high, my head be out of the frame here and have my hi-hats way up here. It would all work. I could get everything as high as I need it and feel nice and comfortable because you need to prioritize your right foot. This is the first thing to be prioritized in kit ergonomics and kit setup. This is so important. The way that you're sitting, how far you are from your bass drum. This is square one for kit setup. So even move the rest of your kit out of the way if you need to. Get this in place and then move the other components back in and adjust them accordingly. So experiment with this, err on the side of too high or too far back. Know that if you're playing heel up, you can get by with sitting a little bit closer as long as you're really high. If you're playing heel down, you can get by with sitting a little bit lower as long as you're pretty far back. And so you can see how, you know, if you sit higher, that opens up this leg angle more. If you sit further back, it opens up the leg angle. So you see how this works. But make sure that your leg is sloping down from your hip. We never want our knee to be as high as our hip, or especially higher. We never want to look like the dad on the kid's tricycle. That would be terribly awkward, and we'd feel terribly out of balance, and I think we know that we need to not do that. But sometimes we, we're just, it's out of our comfort zone to go in the opposite direction of that and continue pushing toward being higher than maybe we're comfortable or being further back than we're comfortable. But I encourage you to experiment with this. Go out of your comfort zone and just test this out. And once you find an adjustment that you think might work, keep it there for a few days. Keep your throne there for a few days and just get used to it and ask yourself, is this feeling better? You know, after a week, is this feeling better? If not, okay, adjust back a little bit. Uh, to maybe where it was, you know, back in the direction from where you started. Just keep an open mind here. Remember that it takes time to adjust to new setups, new kit adjustments, and so be patient with it. But this is gonna help a whole bunch, because like I said, you are now opening up all this space. You're allowing your leg the space it needs for your right foot to actually operate freely and smoothly and fluidly regardless of your technique, which is so important, because in the next lesson of this series, in part two, we're gonna talk about the controversial technique for a smoother bass drum. And this is all about technique and motion, and none of this technique and motion can happen without what we've talked about today. That's why this is so important, but I'm excited for where we're going with this. As we wrap up, let me know how this helps you. Let me know what you're able to do with, with what I've taught you today in terms of thrown height and thrown distance from the kick. I hope this helps you out a bunch. As you examine your throne, let's do some diagnostics. Tell me in the comments, was your throne too low? or was it too close, or both? Tell me about your setup. Let's get some conversation going. I think these things are interesting to know. And also feel free to uh, comment and let us all know, are you heel up or heel down? That would give some context to, um, to whether your throne was too low or too close. But yeah, tell me what you're noticing as you start making these adjustments to your kit. I think this will be pretty interesting as we all work on this together throughout this series on bass drum technique and building better volume and quicker speeds on our right foot. But know that you can do this. I hope this has been helpful to you. I hope this has been valuable and game-changing to you even at this early stage. I can't wait to share with you more as we go further with this. And uh, I think this is gonna help you out a bunch. You're gonna make a lot of right foot progress. So hey, you can do this, stay non-glamorous. I will see you in the next lesson.